author and an editor. And for today's video, I thought we would do sort of a check-in. I'm gonna have a ton of stuff linked down below in the description. I've done a couple of these videos over the years and I'm gonna be referencing a couple of things that if you haven't been around for a while, you might wanna check those out for some more information. But otherwise, yeah, hi, my name's Katie. Where to start? Okay, so I have my own business, I self-publish my books, and I have a freelance editing company. I'm 24 years old, it's the month of November though, and it's my birthday month, so I turn 25 in a couple of weeks. And like I said, I work completely for myself. So this video, I've now been working for myself completely for a little over a year, so I thought I would do a check-in like one year later, how it's been going, how things have changed. I have like five different pie charts to show you. In the videos that I'll be linking down below, I have one on how I started my business to begin with, one that was how, it was like a wrap up of how the year of 2020 went and then I did one about three months ago, like six months later, how it's gone. So now it's been a full year of me working for myself. Sorry if you can hear my cat crying. I started my business in December of 2019. And that's when I first started taking on editing clients. And at that time I was teaching online, I was nannying, I was doing YouTube, I was writing my books, I was editing. So I was like juggling a ton of different jobs. And then in, it was either the, the end of September of 2020, I think it was the very end of September of 2020 is when I finally went full-time working all of my different jobs so it's been a little over a year now so yeah I have a list of things that I want to go through and then I also put a questions box up on my Instagram so you guys can send in your questions so we'll do that at the end I'm thinking this is going to be a long video and there's a lot to talk about so I'll also put timestamps down below if you want to jump around and as always if you have other questions feel free to comment them down below before we get into the rest of the video I want to talk to you a little bit about today's sponsor Skillshare which I think is very relevant for today's topic if you are interested in starting a business or doing something similar to what I I do I think Skillshare might be a great affordable resource for you. They're an online learning community with classes and all different kinds of topics but specifically if you're looking to start your own business, if you're looking to be an editor for one thing they've got lots of writing and editing classes but then they also have classes for freelancers and budgeting and bookkeeping and all of the businessy kind of side of things. I'll have a link down below in my description that you should definitely check out if you're interested because it'll get you a free trial. The first 1,000 people who use my link can get the free trial. I've been using Skillshare for years now and they're constantly adding new classes so you will never run out of things to do and that free trial will give you unlimited access to all of their different stuff so you can explore their site and see all that they have to offer so make sure to check that out if you're interested and let's just get back into the rest of the video let's do the pie chart breakdown so i can kind of show you where things are at now how they've changed and then we'll get into specifics so I'm going to show you the pie chart of what my income looks like a year ago from today. This is just the breakdown of the percentage of where my income was coming from. So I will, I'm looking at it on my screen, I'll flash it on the screen. So about a year ago, this is what my income looked like. 30% was coming from my editing, 10% was coming from my books, 40% was coming from YouTube and Patreon, 18% from nannying, and 2% from teaching. And then compare that to um, three months ago, so six months later, this is what my income then looked like. 20% from books, 39% from YouTube and Patreon, 39% for editing, and then 2% for digital downloads. You'll see I no longer have that as a category in the newest pie chart. So this is what my income looks like today. A year later, we've got 35% for editing, 38% for YouTube and Patreon, and 27% from books. So in just one year's time, I've seen books evolve from 10% to 27%, so I'm very happy to see that jump. And then I think when people see such a big chunk for youtube and patreon they're kind of confused by that so i also made a separate pie chart to break down all of the different things that go into that to kind of give you a better big picture idea so this is the pie chart without the big like umbrella term so still 35 percent editing 27 percent books and then underneath the umbrella of youtube and patreon we've got 15 percent for patreon two percent for affiliates 13% for sponsorships and 8% for the ads on my videos. Now that includes I've got this main channel, I also have a vlog channel, and then as far as affiliate links go, I've got Amazon links, and then I'm also an affiliate for Publisher Rocket. I also use our style sometimes, Liquid IV, the Independence Authors Alliance, and also because I used to teach for Q Kids if people sign up with my referral code, I get a bonus if they get hired. So that's what the affiliate stuff is. So looking at this pie chart, my biggest chunk is definitely editing, books being the second biggest, and then Patreon being the third biggest. So if you're subscribed over my Patreon page, thank you so much. I'm super happy to see this new pie chart because for a while there, not a year ago, maybe like two or three years ago, ads and sponsors from YouTube were definitely the biggest portion of my income. And my priorities have just changed over the years. If you've been subscribed to this channel for a while, you've seen I post a lot less. I still really enjoy this, but 
this went from being like a hobby to a really big part of my job and I feel like I have finally gotten it back down to that hobby level which is what I prefer. I'm happier as this is a hobby. I don't want this as a job. So I'm happy to see the things that I actually want to be my job, editing and books rising above the YouTube stuff. And that's kind of allowed me to feel more creative and more excited to make YouTube content now because now there's not this like pressure of, I need this for my income. Now it's back to it being fun. So I'm really happy with the way that this pie chart looks and seeing it evolve over the past year, it's fun to see it grow, you know? So this year I'm having three books come out. I had my book The Anti-Relationship Year come out in March, my book The Marionettes came out in August, and my third book of this year is called Wicked Souls and it's coming out December 7th. So I guess we'll talk about the books next because I also have a pie chart for the books and how um, the percentage of which ones have sold the most this year. So briefly, in case you haven't followed me for a while, these are my books. The Sweetest Kind of Poison came out in August of 2018. This is a collection of poetry. My second book was The Anti-Virginity Pact. This is a young adult contemporary and this came out in June of 2020. And then I had my second poetry collection, Poems for the End of the World, come out in October of 2020. And like I said, The Anti-Relationship Year came out in March, Marionettes, August, and Wicked Souls will be out in December. So here's our pie chart of how the books have been selling this year. So 5% of my sales have been for The Sweetest Kind of Poison, 12% has been for Poems for the End of the World, 15% for the Anti-Virginity Pact, 23% for the Anti-Relationship Year, and 45% for The Marionettes. So this doesn't surprise me at all because The Marionettes and The Anti-Relationship Year are new releases this year that they've sold the most. Oh, and also my novels tend to sell more than poetry. Poetry is more niche. This doesn't surprise me. The thing that really surprised me this year was how much my book The Marionettes has taken off. This book is now obviously not just my bestseller for this year, but my bestseller ever. It's just really taken on a life of its own. So I'm really excited to see how that does next month when the second book in the series comes out and then also just next year. So yeah, this pie chart doesn't surprise me at all. I will be interested to see how the Anti-Virginity Pact and the Anti-Relationship Year do in this coming year. They're a completed duology. They're both standalones, but they like go together because I'm doing some things with this series in the coming year. Um, if you're subscribed to my newsletter over on my website, um, you'll be the first to hear about what's going on. So those are the pie charts. I'm pulling up my list. I also thought it'd be interesting to compare my business expenses from the past year. I definitely spent more money this year on business stuff, um, but to be fair, I'm publishing three books this year, which is more than I published last year. So a lot of that has been for the books and I've also started producing audiobooks, which are very expensive. So this year, my business expenses, um, I'm estimating are gonna come out around $12,000. Compared to last year, I think I had about $8,500 in expenses. So that's definitely seen an increase, but that goes for my books, but then also my editing business. If I buy things for YouTube, like new equipment, like it goes into all of my different things. We've definitely seen an increase this year. I'm not expecting it to be that much next year because I'm not expecting to have as many books come out. So speaking about next year, I actually don't have a publishing schedule set yet, but to be fair this year, I thought I was only gonna publish two books. I thought I was gonna publish the anti-relationship year and I thought I was gonna publish another book that actually still hasn't come out yet. I had no idea that I was gonna publish The Marionettes and Wicked Souls this year. So plans change. So as of right now, I'm thinking Marionette's book three is gonna come out next year. Title and cover reveal coming out in my newsletter also soon. And then the book, the second book that I thought was gonna come out this year, I'm hoping will come out next year. And that's a standalone romantic suspense. I'm interested to see how editing looks for me next year because this year, honestly, I'm really lucky. I haven't had to stress about that. My calendar has been full. I've been fully booked like six months in advance, pretty much all year. As of right now, I'm not booked out as far in advance as I had been this year. So we'll see if my calendar stays as full this coming year. Um, I've got one spot left open in February, one spot left open in March, and then from April on I'm open. I want to get on my calendar. That's my availability. So yeah, we'll just do next some general reflections on how the past year has gone, and then I'll get into the questions that you guys sent in for me. So honestly, this whole year has been kind of a whirlwind. I kind of attribute that to the pandemic and everything. Like everything has just felt so strange. So time has just really, really flown this past year. But I will say this year I've been so much less stressed about money than I had been in the previous year when I was working all of those different jobs and stuff. I've just been less stressed in general, or at least the kind of stress that I have is the kind of stress that I want. Like I'm stressing over my books and stuff and like I enjoy this. So I feel like my life has slowed down. I'm not like constantly in this like survival mode of like 
working crazy 90 hour weeks anymore to try and get everything done so i feel like my physical and my mental health has been a lot better this year just because i've been less busy i've been able to focus on things that i enjoy so i feel like that just improves your quality of life inadvertently and then yeah i'm just not like constantly running back and forth i used to be waking up at 5 a.m to teach and then i would rush to get to nannying and then i would try and get my editing client work done and then i would write at night and i was just working all day long and now i have the flexibility and the freedom to make my schedule and i wake up and i work out when i have a nice chill morning and i go sit in a coffee shop and i work on my editing client work and then i come home and it's just a slower pace of life that I didn't even know that I needed. That's been the biggest surprise of this year and coming up with that like pleasant routine for myself has been um, my favorite thing that's happened of this this year. Not to say everything's perfect and fine and dandy, um, I just tend to look at the positives. I'm gonna look at your questions and maybe they'll spur some other things that I wanted to talk about. Do you ever miss the other jobs or wish an office job that has people in a whole environment of its own? No, I do not miss the other jobs at all. The like working with other people and being around other people, I did start to miss, and that's why I've started working in coffee shops in the morning, and I also do lives over on my second channel. They're like work with me. It's where I'll be live for two or three hours in the afternoon, and I get to chat with other people who are also working from home. So that's kind of given me that community vibe again. So yeah, I did miss that, but I've been trying to figure out ways to fix that. How long did it take to get clients full-time? It took me about a year to build up to the point where I felt like I could go full-time with this. But that's also, um, if you haven't seen my video on how I started my business, I would watch that one first because I was also building up my youtube channel since 2016 and i do feel like that building up this audience and everything has made a really big difference in how i'm able to get clients compared to someone who would be starting from scratch with no kind of platform or anything so realistically it's been like technically building up since 2016 but i didn't start taking on editing clients until 2019. how have you overcome the challenges of communicating with difficult or rude clients i don't take them on anymore um i really don't have issues with that anymore my clients are lovely um i work with a lot of the same clients i'm really lucky to have repeat clients who come back to me and i can spot red flags easier now if someone's difficult to communicate from the get-go i kind of know they're going to be a difficult client so i don't even take them on and i think that's something i've really learned over the past couple of years of doing this is no project is worth your mental sanity to deal with difficult clients and it's your business and you don't have to take on everybody and being choosier about who you do work with is worth it in the long run so the more you work with people and the more you do this the easier it is to spot the people who will not be pleasant to work with like if you're disrespectful towards me with our initial emails how do you stay consistent with your schedule and motivate yourself to get things done one day at a time so um whenever i start a project i'm assuming you're talking about like editing clients and everything I do the math with every client, um, exactly how many pages do I need to get edited per day to finish by this date on time, and I kind of check in with myself day after day, so if I start to fall behind, like, I have to, like, I look at that, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to start doing this many pages a day, so that kind of keeps me accountable as I do that check-in with myself, and honestly, I don't stay consistent with my schedule, I just kind of take the days as they come, and I do what I need in any given day. I got a lot of questions on, like, how to get started. Do you have any tips on getting clients and things like that? I would recommend that video where I talk about how I started my business. I talk about all of that in that video. How do you plan time off to have a healthy balance between work and non-work? I'm still figuring this out. I'm kind of a workaholic. This has probably been the greatest challenge of working for myself, especially because I love what I do too. So the lines kind of blur. And a lot of times the times that I take off are when like a client cancels on me or something last minute. And then I end up having a week off. So I kind of feel like fate kind of works out that way and forces me to take a break sometimes i try not to work on any client work over the weekend that's kind of been my new balance unless i'm like behind on something i don't have a good answer to this because i'm still figuring it out to be honest so yeah i think that's gonna be it for today's video feel free to let me know if you have any other questions if you want to check out my books or my editing services everything's linked down below as well as those other videos if you want some more information thanks for following me along with this whole journey it's been really cool to kind of go through all of this with you guys if you want to subscribe over to my second channel and come work with us 
us we usually are there on mondays and wednesdays at 1 p.m mountain time if you want to work with us during the day also it's the month of november right now i'm doing daily nanowrimo vlogs over there as well there's lots of other content on that second channel if you want to come hang out with me some more with this coming year like i said i'm hoping to publish at least two books this coming year i'm also turning 26 next year so i will officially no longer be able to be on my parents insurance so that's a little bit of a stressor for me because i'm not paying for insurance right now so i'm expecting next year a lot of things to change so we'll see how that goes oh also a couple of other mini announcements you can now pre-order the wicked souls audiobook i have the form linked down below we're also getting to the end of when you're going to be able to pre-order a signed copy so if you want to grab one of those before i close that down make sure you check out my shop link down below i hope you're excited for the next book release i'm really looking forward to it and if you want to stay caught up with how nanowrimo and everything's going i'm writing book three for that series right now again it's over on my second channel that's gonna be it for today's video thanks so much for watching i hope you're having an awesome day and i will see you guys in the next one very very soon bye no, pretty Caroline.